here that I thought was absolutely hilarious. This is regarding my favorite LSD XOXO. He decided to jump onto flipping Twitter and upload or tweet one of the most um, controversial tweets I've seen in a while, considering how um, how people weren't really fans of his last set of Bergheim, let's just say. So LSDXOXO played during the Easter extravaganza over there at Bergheim and people were not happy in the slightest because that's where I kind of first learned of the term flipping TikTok techno. I didn't even know what the fuck that shit was. And then obviously people kind of, you know, essentially said it's kind of now top 100 type of hit type of stuff and just really corny, cheesy Euro trash type of music. And obviously nowadays the kind of, the way to be like unironically un fun and cool is to like really trash in horrible music and lsdxo even though he's a you know god tier flipping producer um djing wise he's probably going to do what needs to be done to basically make the crowd happy and in a place like Bergheim, where people take themselves very very friendly but very very serious um you can imagine him and his head thinking hey i'm going to play this really cheesy euro trash strong this is going to really kind of lighten the vibe up and get people kind of dancing and getting happy well people were not happy in the slightest and i think as much as i love this guy as much as I love LSDXO, I think he really went over a line with this sort of comment on Twitter. He said as following, this is what he posted. Techno dweebs are bullying me because I played Nicki Minaj and Venga Boys in Bergheim. So sorry you guys don't like fun with a sad face. Then he followed it up and said, notice only, notice the only naysayers are white men. This is the critical part that I think might get him in trouble, especially with the Bergheim Booker type people because essentially... This is what people would um, term to be reverse racism. And it's also really funny because, you know, Berghain or what was previously called Uskut was essentially set up in Germany, in Berlin, obviously, a predominantly, you know, white majority country um, for gay men. That's who essentially was set up for. So to be in this club that was essentially made as a quasi safe space for that group of people and the LGBTQ plus and beyond, and then start saying it's the white men that are kind of, you know, coming against me, that's a little bit wild. And also the idea that people in Bergheim would be happy hearing Nicki Minaj and Wenger Boys is also LOL. But it makes you think about myself, like if I ever got a chance or when, so no, if, when I get the chance to play at Bergheim, one of the things that you wouldn't want to do, in my opinion, and in general, you go to those kind of places, you don't go there to hear the stuff that you already hear on the radio or stuff that you already hear day to day. You want to hear stuff that's a bit different and is a bit out there, especially when you consider that for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, the minimum set that you get playing at Bergheim is like four hours. And sometimes it can get six or even eight, if, remember, if you're closing. So you get a long time. You get time to really dig into your flipping record bag, really take the flipping, you know, ravers on a journey and really kind of challenge yourself and push the boundaries of what people deem to be flipping dance music or whatever it may be. So why go there and play, you know, flipping Eminem? or Nicki Minaj or whatnot. It doesn't make any sense. You might as well go there and kind of really push the envelope and try things because this might be the only chance in your DJ career where you get the opportunity to do that because everyone's usually quite receptive to people that are playing there. Some people go there without even knowing who's on the flipping lineup. So you get a chance to really kind of play in front of a really receptive overall crowd. So for him to go on there, in there, in that sort of space and play Nicki Minaj and Venga Boys, in one way, it's kind of cool. The fact that he doesn't give a fuck. I said it before, right? The fact that he's willing to troll people who take clubbing very, very seriously, Bergheim fans, myself included, is kind of cool. The fact that he doesn't actually care. But I think it's also a little bit disrespectful to space that you're going in there and basically playing, you know, such commercial music and not really giving it your rule or not really offering anything interesting in the slightest. It doesn't really make any sense. And then on top of that, finishing it off with the white men bad comment is bizarre because essentially the white men are the ones that flipping booked him at the brave. That's the funny thing, right? Mostly the white men are the ones that he impressed that kind of got him on board to kind of play there. So that whole white men bad thing is really, 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 really odd overall but i think this kind of generally speaks i think to the general tension going on in the scene i think these guys and girls lsdxo so good example and a few other people in this kind of tiktok techno scene they're just too big to ignore and i think if you're burger and even though you're big even though you're successful even though you have an amazing reputation loyal fan base you still have to make sure that you're balancing the books you still have to make sure business is somewhat decent so what better way in the post-pandemic world than to tap into people like this and like i said they're just too hard to ignore so you kind of have to make them fit within your club but some of them don't get it 
or sometimes the fans won't like it, especially the ones that are basically, you know, um, you would say maybe quote unquote responsible for the club success, which is not really a thing. But yeah, you know what I mean? The kind of OG crew, they're not going to get it, all the regulars. So you kind of have this hard place to be in if you're the booker um, over there at Bergheim in terms of what you do. Do you book these guys and girls who are, you know, who have, you know, incredible amounts of followers online, their live streams and their, of their mixes get incredible amount of views. People always buy their singles and whatever, maybe sell out their tickets, other events sell out. Why not get them on board, have them play a set? Maybe they're going to bring their A game, maybe not. But essentially you get a chance to kind of recoup whatever money you lost in that two and a half years that everybody had of not having their spaces open and having to operate under flipping restrictions and whatnot. A lot of clubs are, you know, some of them didn't survive, especially in the UK festivals even. So I can understand that tension, but I can also understand if you're a Bergheim regular and you're seeing him essentially insulting your intelligence and then essentially saying that you don't like him just because he's black is legitimately insane so big up lsdxoxo but i think this may be one of those tweets that he may end up regretting in the future or maybe not maybe that's actually the coolest thing is though. maybe in the future he actually doesn't regret it maybe he thinks you know what no like the coolest thing is to actually not care about playing in Bergheim. Uh, you know he, he had his run he liked it and that's it and he's just going to keep moving on and extending who knows